Good evening, great evening, great evening, great evening. Hey, folks, hey, millionaires. This is Wesley, billion-dollar virgin with another millionaire midnight rent. It's 1230 a.m. in the morning right now, and I'm live here on my Instagram account. And we all know what the rant is. This is my podcast that I do live every night, every evening here around 12. To give those people such as yourself the opportunity to ask me questions about my life, my mindset, my businesses. As many of you do know that I'm worth about $40 million. Business is good. I run several and a variety of companies. And not only that, man, I'm a great father as well. I'm a good lover. I'm a good friend (laughs) sometimes, right? So I do this because I didn't have the opportunity to be coached by a multimillionaire. So I want to give you the opportunity to be coached, okay? So tonight, it's going to be Ask Me Anything, okay? Ask me whatever you want. If you're brand new, come at the number one. And for all my lone timers, thank you always. Thank you for the shares and the likes. And thank you for leaving comments on my rants here on Instagram. I do appreciate that. And remember, I only have one account. One account. Wesley Million Dollar Virgin is my only verified account. Our other accounts are fraudulent accounts. So please don't. Let those people steal your money because they will scam you, okay? So before I get started here, let me answer some questions here. Are you actually a virgin? Yes, I am. Hold on. Oh, okay. Go ahead and comment your names here below. And let me give you a shout out before I start to answer questions here. Just want to show you some love here. I had a tremendous day. Today I just worked. Okay. And I know what you're thinking sometime. You know, Wesley, you're rich. You can do whatever you want to do. Why do you always work? You know, do you ever take a break? Do you ever just relax? Do you ever just, you know, just leave work to the side? Yes, sometimes, but not rarely. This is just my philosophy of life. And unfortunately, many people don't get this opportunity to do what I'm about to say here. But it's nothing like aligning your passion with your purpose. And when your purpose and your passion makes you money, to me, that's just a golden opportunity to to really enjoy life. And unfortunately, many people, you know, they're not there yet. You have a ton of people that make a lot of money, but they don't necessarily like what they do. But I love it. Uh, I just I love what I do, honestly. So it's not really work to me. You know, if I'm on vacation, I'm working. If I'm anywhere, I'm working. I just I love it. You know, it's like working out. Do I need to continue to work out? Probably not. But I love it. I mean, I love the growth. I love the progress. I love the pain. Just like business, I love the wins, the losses, the failures, the successes, the challenges, the adversities. It's just fun for me. It's just a game, honestly. I love it. Okay? Thank you for the follows. Good evening. I just bought your course. Let's go! Give me a second. For some reason, my... Okay, there we go. All right, let me go ahead and start answering questions here. I didn't see anybody names here below, so. Hey, Wes, I lost motivation and drive lately. Advice, please. Well, let me ask you a question here. This is for everybody that feel that they lost motivation. Listen, you haven't lost anything. The issue is, is what you're thinking about, Okay. You're thinking about the things that don't motivate you. Does that make sense? You know, whenever people lose motivation, there's a couple of things that happen. 
you get discouraged, right? Does that make sense? You know, maybe you're running a business, maybe you're in school, uh, you know, maybe you're working tough, hard at your job, and you just get discouraged because, man, you say, well, you know, I don't see the outcome. I'm not seeing the results. And we label that as a loss of motivation. What I want you to understand, this is very important to understand, folks. Please get this. Is that your loss of motivation is just you thinking about how your life is not working the way that you want it to work. Does that make sense? You know, when people tell me that they're not happy, people that are not happy are just people who feel the images that are in their mind doesn't align with what they think happiness is. Because everybody has their own definition of happiness unconsciously. And unfortunately, many of us are not really aware of it. So, and happiness to most people come and go because you haven't properly defined it. I give an example. Like, me to be happy is to wake up in the morning, to breathe, to talk to you. Spend time with my children to work, to work out, to drive one of my cars. Those things make me happy to be able to encourage people, right? But I know that, right? I had to sit down and write down on a sheet of paper, even though this sounds very trivial to you. But I had to say, you know, Wesley, what makes you happy? I promise you dollars to donuts, nobody on this rent has ever taken out one moment, one minute of their lives and wrote down, you know, what makes me happy? Because everybody wants to be happy. <laughs> I, hit on, I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy. Well, what makes you happy? Do you know? And many people are very vague or unclear about what their happiness is. So I make happiness easy. Okay. Uh, you know, I never lose motivation because I'm always thinking about the things that I want and the things that I'm achieving. I never think about what's not happening. Does that make sense? I give example. When I got fired from my job, I didn't think about how the boss screwed me. Like, I didn't think about, oh, I've been here for two years. I can't believe they let me go. I didn't do that. I said, this man gave me a great opportunity to go chase my dreams. And I didn't even know I needed to chase my dreams. I was 21 at the time. I, I swear to God, I was driving my brand new car that I bought from the dealership because I was the IT person at a car dealership. And when I got terminated at the age of 21, <clears throat> I was like, well, this happened for a reason. And maybe this happened because maybe it's time for me to chase my dreams. Maybe because I saw him live his dreams. You know, I thank God for my old, my old uh, manager or the owner of the company. Because if it wasn't for him. I would have never had a glimpse of what was possible. Does that make sense? What I want you to understand is you're not losing motivation. You're not losing drive. You're just ungrateful. You're thinking about everything that's going wrong in your life. You're thinking about your challenges. You're thinking about your adversities. You're thinking about how you look. You're thinking about your friends, your significant other. You're thinking about everything that's in your life that's deplorable. Okay? I'm like this. If you're going to judge yourself, be fair. What does that mean? You can't just judge yourself based off all the negative events that are taking place in your life. Like you can't just lay in there in your bed and like, oh, this is not working. I got debt. I don't know what I want to do. I want a new job. I want a new business. Man, that man, he cheating on me. I want a better girl. That girl using me for... Like you just can't do that. Listen, if you're going to judge your life experiences, you have to judge fairly. How about the things that are going well in your life? Hello? Are you not breathing? Okay, that's a check mark. Do you have arms and, and you have fingers? Okay, that's a check. Do you have a mind to think? Okay, that's a check. Are you laying in the bed right now? Okay, that's a check. You have AC? Let's go. You got heat? Let's go. Are you in an apartment in a house? Let's go. Are you laying on the bed? Let's go. Do you have a bathroom to go pee and take a dump in? Oh, yes, go. You got food in the refrigerator? Let's go. Do you have Wesley Virgin talking to you tonight? Let's go. It's too many things to be grateful for, young people. The problem is you're fucking entitled. 
Just entitled, man. Spoiled. That's why I suggest you travel the world. And I get it. Some of you don't even have passports. But that's the one thing. The one gift I gave my children is the opportunity when they were young to travel to different countries so they will have a compare and contrast of what poverty and destitution really looked like. They saw people that actually had, they could complain, you know, something like we went to Bal, no, not Bali, we went to, uh, 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 where did we go? Uh, Malaysia. I mean, some poor people out there. Okay. They saw it. So, Now, when they come back to America and they see people that's in Malaysia, where the average income is $100 to $200 per month, all of a sudden, you're grateful. When we went to Jamaica, I took my children to Jamaica as well, and we see gentlemen and families in homes with no AC, no heater, and everybody sleeps in one room because there's only one room in the house, and it's five of them. No TV. All of a sudden, now you're like, man, I'm lucky. It's not that bad in America here. Does that make sense? Many of you, you're just too entitled because you've only had the experience here, like where you live now. So you have nothing to compare it against. But listen, be grateful. Be grateful every day that you have an opportunity to conquer, to master a skill, to sharpen your skills, to think, to say yes to opportunities, to surround yourself around people who are winning. You got to be grateful for those opportunities. You got to be grateful for every moment of your life. Okay? What's next? Talk to me here. (sighs) Thank you guys for tagging a few people here. Okay. Do you know who's Carlos Slim or Warren Buffett? Yes. Hey, Lisa Graham, how are you? How can I make money? Oh, this is this is this is the question of the decade. How can I make money? Listen, folks, listen, listen. You know, every rant, every single rant that I do. And by the way, if you want to get access to all my other podcasts, just go to google.com, type in Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin Podcast, and you'll be able to get access to all my rents on your iPhone, okay, for free. But, you know, this is the question. How do I make money? How do I make money? How do I make money? I mean, are you not making money at your job right now? Honestly, that's the wrong question, you know, because when you ask somebody, how do you make money? I mean, you have a job, you're making money. A better question is, how do I start a business to make money? How do I start a business that I love to make money, right? You got to be very clear with your questions here. Listen, there's millions of ways to make money, right? I can give you several different niches and opportunities and strategies and methods to make money. But you're not going to do it, okay? You're not going to do anything. I was talking to this young man today. I went to get um, an IV. You know that drip therapy where they put vitamins in your body? I did it every once in a while. And I went down there and I took the McLaren out, you know, just to put that bad boy on the road and speed a little bit. And came back, came home. There was a young man downstairs at my high rise and he said man that's your car I said yeah he said I like it I said thank you then he asked me he said man what do you do and I told him I'm a digital marketer and he said well what got you into that so I told him my story <sighs> and he asked me the question that you know everybody asked me 
What's the first step, Wes? You know, what's the first step, man? I think he, um, he said he's thinking about getting into real estate. He's 25 years old. And he's like, well, you know, what's the, what's the first step to make some money? You know? Because, you know, anytime you see a, a half a million dollar car, that's, that's the cost of the car, right? It's a half a million dollars. Now, you can't even imagine. Some people can't even imagine spending that type of money on a vehicle, right? You could buy two homes with a half a million dollars. And so you, when you see people, and, I, you know, I never really think about it, honestly. I'm just driving my car. But sometimes I forget I'm driving a half a million dollar car. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm driving a half a million dollar car, right? So um, it's very normal for people to approach you and to be very, you know, curious about what you do. And I told him this. And this is what I would tell you if you're trying to start or you don't know how to start. I, I, I said, well, young man, the first thing you need to do is to find out what you want. You know, before you, you want to get into real estate, right? Uh, and I said, well, but what, what do you want for your life? You know, you ever thought about that? Like, what do you want? Like, how do you want to live your life? What do you see yourself becoming? And, you know, like most people, they have this deer in the headlights look on their faces. Almost everybody that I ask this question to. Or if they answer it, it's very vague, very ambiguous. You know, they're like, oh, I want to, oh, you know, I want to make one. I want to take care. I was like, oh, God. Right. But, um. That's what I share with them. And I say, it's all about the mindset, man. I said, man, you're right. It is about the mindset. And I had a book. And he said, hey, what book are you reading? And I'm reading this book called The Blue Ocean. It was recommended from one of my billionaire friends. And um, but I said, he said, what book would you recommend? And, of course, I gave him a book. But I said, more importantly, my man, you need to find out what you want. You got to sit down. I told him the story on how I used to go to a wealthy neighborhood in Houston, Houston, Texas when I was broke. And I went here for years. And I would just write down what I wanted. And it took me a couple of months to really get crystal clear about what I wanted. And I, I, I figured it out. I discovered what I wanted and how I wanted to live. And until you... In my opinion, until you just figure that out, you know, it's going to be very hard for you to stick to anything. Does that make sense? See, the reason why you want to have clarity about what you want so you can stick to it, because it's going to be very easy for you not to stick to it. You may start real estate, Forex, digital marketing, internet marketing, network marketing, and you just stop. You just get discouraged. And the reason why is, you don't have a clear path on what you want for your life. So you have to think about when you write down what you want, that's your blueprint, right? And then the next step is once you discover what you want, you have to think to yourself. You got to be very honest with yourself, by the way. And you have to ask yourself a question. Does, what doesn't align? What in my life right now, does it align with the goal or the dream that I want to manifest? Let me say it again. You know, once you discover what you want, once you're very clear about the life that you want to live for you and your family, you have to ask yourself a very tough question. What in my life right now or who in my life right now doesn't align with my dream or goal. And this is when you have to start to eliminate people. This is when you have to stop going to certain places and hanging around certain people. And it's a lot of changes that need to take place, right? Because once you clear with the blueprint on what you want, obviously there's a lot of elimination that needs to take place. And I think this is another area that people get stuck because no one wants to eliminate anything. 
You know, you have people that want to be part-time entrepreneurs. No such thing as a part-time entrepreneur, by the way. No such thing, man. You'll never be rich part-time. And, um, you know, you'll never make a million dollars working part-time at your job. I mean, part-time with your business and full-time at your job. Uh-uh. And even if you were able to do that, you wouldn't be on this rant right now. Right? <clears throat> but, like I said, is many of you, you're just not willing to be all in yet. And listen, don't beat yourself up. Like, this is a timing. This is why these rants are so important because, you know, one moment, one night, you might get on this rant and you may have a transformation. You may be in your bed just crying like a baby because you understand that everything that I'm sharing with you is true. You may realize that, you know what, it's time for you to stop screwing around. It's time for you to get serious about your life. It's time for you to stop smoking and drinking and being lazy and lethargic and making excuses and just playing this game with yourself when you know what you need to do. You know? Does that make sense? So, it's a timing. It it is a timing for everyone. And I don't know what the time is. I'm just the messenger. I'm just an advocate of you. I'm here just sharing my philosophy. But that timing is just up to you. I've seen it happen. I've seen people change within a year, two years, five years. I've seen it right before my eyes. I've seen people just click and just make different choices, like almost overnight. And so that's why I suggest to listen to these rants. I mean, they're free. And I'm very direct. I'm very just real and brutal here. I'm not here to take your money. I'm not here for you to be my friend. I'm here to educate you on what is necessary if you want to live that life of opulence, right? Abundance, you know, wealth, rich, happy, strong, just really feel good about your human experience and feel good that you're making progress. Does that make sense? Okay. You know, I was watching, the reason why I posted that smoking bit that I grabbed from TikTok because they asked cardiologists, cardiologists, they asked them, they said, hey, what is one thing that you would never do as a cardiologist? And over 10 doctors said they would never smoke, ever. And I don't think people, well, well, they don't because you're not a doctor, right? Doctors really understand the implications of smoking and drinking, by the way, because that's what they do for a living. So they study it very immensely. So, I mean, did you know that, you know, most heart attacks and most, you know, coronary heart disease, I mean, it's just used from people that smoke and drink too much. I mean, this this is from doctors here. Those are usually the cases. <laughs> and, and you got to think about something about smoking. And this includes vaping, cigarettes, weed, any type of smoke in your body is detrimental for your heart. And unfortunately, you won't find that out until you get older and you'll see. You'll have complications for sure. Um, and this is not a smoking rant, but, you know, I, like me, I would never date a woman that smokes. I mean, I don't smoke. I never will smoke. And now I don't even drink. At all. I never was a drinker, you know, every once in a while. But now I don't, I don't even want to drink anything, honestly. Without water and juice, that's, that's fine with me. And if people would really think about why they do what they do, I don't think people really think about that. Like, if you start to think about why you do what you do, like, why do you smoke? Why do you, why are you lazy? Why do you procrastinate? Why do you do drugs? Why you smoke weed? And if you think about it, we do those things because we want to feel better, right? And we feel that we need a substance, something to make us feel better. But I want you to understand something here, okay? Is that you, within you, you have the power and the ability to feel good without anything entering your body. 
Like just to know that, you know, I'm not saying that you're going to do it, but just to know it, to know that you can feel excited, relax, enthusiastic without putting any type of substance in your body. To me, that's phenomenal just to know it. And obviously the next step is to do it, right? And to be able to utilize your power. Because this is what disciplined people do. People that are disciplined, they're able to repudiate things that make them feel good. Right? Things you want to do, you know, things that you just, including sex. <clears throat> Some of you are sexaholics. You know, you want to have sex all the time. I get it. We all love it, you know. But I believe there are times that you need to repudiate it. You need to be celibate. And it's okay. It's not a big deal. But it just shows your own personal power and your own control over yourself. Why do you think we have so many just random babies on the planet? Because people just having this casual sex and casual whatever. It's very casual. No one's really intentional about what they do. And when you're not intentional, you end up living a life that's very chaotic, full of stress, full of hurts, pains, and depression. Okay? Next question for me, please. <clears throat> so listen, stop smoking. Let me see here. And, and listen, I understand that um, some of you are not going to even pay attention to me. Like, you know, some of you are like, oh, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to smoke as I want to. I don't care. I don't care what you say, Wes. But what that displays and portrays how addicted you are. I said, it's not about me. It just shows you how addicted you are to it. You know, whenever a person justifies an activity that they know is negative, that they know is debilitating and weakening to their body, and they justify it, it just shows how addicted they are. That's it. <laughs> and that's something that you have to battle with within yourself. Okay, but I'm not here to judge you. I don't want you to do. I want you to live a long time. Like I don't. You don't have to age. You don't have to get older and look terrible. You know, I see some people there like 30 and 20 years old. They look 40. Skin looks disgusting, and you know, you can just always tell when someone just uses drugs. How they smell, how their teeth look, how their face look. Right, it's it's just just how they their appearance itself. I want you to have a glow, like me. I have a glow. You gonna have a glow. Take care of your body. If you believe in God, if you believe that God gave you this temple, the temple is your body, right? The body is the temple of God. Then why tarnish it? Like why adulterate the gift that God has given you? Like he created something great, which is you. He allowed you to be here. He created you. He formulated you. He took his time with you. And now you're just fucking it up. <laughs> right? It's like you just don't care at all about your temple or your experience. And I believe that life is a gift. You know, it took me a while to understand it, but life is truly a gift. And many of you, you're not great stewards of your gift. But like I said, it's always an opportunity for you to be better stewards of your gift. Okay? And that's why I'm here. To educate you and to help you to go deeper within yourself. To be, get, to be able to become the self that you're proud of. And that other people are proud of. And that your family is proud of. I want you to understand that you can be that person. Whatever person that you want to become, you can be it. Okay, you can. You have an opportunity. Okay. Next question for me, please. <clears throat> Let me see here. So you ain't smoked in a day in your life? No, I don't. I don't. I've never smoked, man. I don't smoke. I don't I don't see the purpose of putting smoke in my body. I don't know what that's going to do for me. I don't know how that's going to help me. 
Like, if I want to relax, I just take a deep breath, honestly. That's it. Like, watch this. That's the same thing that smokers do. Smokers are so, like, I hate to call you dumb, but if you smoke, you kind of are dumb. But smokers are so dumb, they don't realize that this deep breath that they're taking when they smoke, I don't think it's so much about the chemical then is about just taking a deep breath. Like, try a test it one day. Before you light up the cigarette or light up the vape or whatever you do, just breathe in, just... Just like you do with a cigarette. And just watch how relaxed you become because I always hear the... Well, you know, smoking relaxes me. Take a deep breath, man. Just try it. You know, don't, hey, listen, don't believe me. Just try it. If you don't, if you're not relaxed, then continue to debilitate your body. Continue to obliterate your body. It's yours. And it's yours to tarnish. Okay? What's next here? Any knowledge about semen retention? I've never done it. And I don't think it's a benefit. How old were you when you started to hang out with rich people? Well, I'm gonna be honest, I never hung out with rich people until I got rich. The only time I was around a few rich people is when I went to events. But other than that, no. And like in Houston, Texas, I wasn't hanging around any millionaires. No, not at all. Uh Yeah, I know. A young lady said, it's crazy how most people don't know they think it comes from the drug. And let me tell you something. You know, marketers, they're so good. They're so good, man. Marketers, like, have you ever studied? You know, I would suggest to study the psychology of marketing. It's really fascinating. Think about it. Somebody actually created a cigarette and made people believe that it was sexy to smoke, to put smoke in your body. Just think about that for a second, right? Like fire, smoke, that obviously will kill you, right? But someone, through marketing, by the way, because what they did is they linked. See, this is, listen, you need to study psychology. Something that's called anchoring. Like, if I want you to do something that maybe you normally won't do, all I have to do is link it to something that you like. That's all I got to do. All right? That's it. Something that you like. And if I link it to something that you like, if I anchor that over and over again, then you will end up doing it. You will begin to embody that habit or that trait. And that's what marketers do. Right? What they did with the vape was they were smart with vapes because now vapes, you don't need a lighter. And then two, it, it tastes good. They put a flavor to it, right? <laughs> I mean, it was genius, uh, and but it was just stupid because everybody fell for it. So everybody is smoking the vapes because it tastes good. You know, it tastes good. It's a good taste when you inhale it. You don't have to smoke anything, so you smoke it everywhere. So now people are vaping more than they smoke because you don't need to go outside to smoke. You can vape, like, anywhere, right? And vaping is just as worse, if not even more exacerbating than smoking. But you got to do research, you know. No one reads on this planet. No one researches anything they just do what their dumb friends do. But that's okay. And some of you need to watch the TikTok videos. You have many women that will show you how this one person no longer has a throat. I think like a has a hole in their throat because of vaping. That's what they said. Stop vaping. Because I think they got cancer of the throat or something. <clears throat> it's a lot of TikTok people like this. And they are advocates for people to stop vaping. Because this one guy, he doesn't have a mouth. I mean, I was like, God dang, what's going on? And listen, it doesn't have to be you. 
it's like with the steroid uses now. And I know I'm talking about a variety of topics here, but it's just something on my heart I want to share with you. Like, listen, man, don't take steroids. It's just stupid. You know, this TRT, everybody's taking this testosterone. Listen, and I, I seen a TikTok, this 18-year-old, he said, don't do it. He had a heart attack at 18 years old because of steroids. Do you not understand how dangerous TRT and all this growth hormone you're putting in your body? I mean, you're... You're like, you can never get off this stuff. And if you do get off this, you're going to have to go to the doctor for the rest of your life just to make sure you're okay. Then when you take testosterone, your body is not going to naturally produce it anymore. So, you know, you'll take it and you get all jacked. But as soon as you get off of it, man, it'll never be the same. So what I'm saying is educate yourself before you start to experiment on all these different drugs and all these different enhancement things, you know. Me, I just keep it simple. Vitamins, water, juices, protein, creatine, that's it. Everything else is hard work, baby. Let's go. <laughs> that's it. Okay? I enjoy the work. Hey, Sonya, how are you? Uh, no, I wouldn't say testosterone is safe, my man. Listen, to me, it doesn't make any sense for you to inject something in your body that you already produce. Like, why do you need, to, like it's different things you can do as far as your diet and your activities to reduce more test, more testosterone, folks. I just think people are just so deluded by the trends. They just see people doing it and they're like, oh, I guess I, got, I, guess I need to do that too. I don't know, man. I don't know. Gotta pray for some of you folks. What's questions here? Uh, question. I will get off of that. We're not going to have a debate about that because I know some of you going to get overly emotional because I get it. You can't can't put down the pipe. <laughs> I get it. Hey, I get it. You're addicted. It's all good. Much love to you. All right. What's the next questions for me here? <laughs> questions here. What do you do to raise your vibration instantly? Do you re-exercise? Uh, exercise, me personally. I just exercise, man. I love it. Like, I can't wait to go to the gym tomorrow. I'm like, man, I'm for the... Listen, I'm, I'm going to put in that work tomorrow. Tomorrow is chest and um, triceps. I'm going to do a little legs. Two hours, baby. I'm putting in that work tomorrow. I'm ready. I am putting in that work. I'm looking forward to it. So that's like, and you know, one thing, if you want to boost your testosterone, work out. You ever notice that people that work out are very sexually charged? Like, you know, you're more horny, right? You're more, you want sex more when you work out. You know, that's why when people work out and they have sex, you know, those two people, to get, oh man, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. Uh, you know, the people that don't work out, I wouldn't say the sex is the best. My best sexual partners have been people who worked out. So, you know, if you want to boost your testosterone, work out, go to the gym, you know, get active. What's next here? What's next here, folks, ladies and gentlemen, talk to me here. Uh, questions for me. Talk to me, folks. I see that you're talking to each other, but talk to me. How do I manifest good things in my life? Easy. One word. I'll write this down. Expectation. Begin to expect good things to take place in your life. But you just can't stop at the word good. Because what does good mean? Good can mean many things, right? So you have to be very clear about what you mean by good. Like, what do you want? See, it always goes back to what do you want, right? Isn't it crazy? 
It always goes back to what do you want? Well, I want good things to happen. Well, what is a good thing that you want to happen to you in your life? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not clear about what you want, you won't get it. What do I need to do to ram this in the back of your brain? Okay. Do I need to slap you upside your head for you to get that? How many times have I said this? Okay. You need to know what you want. You cannot speak in vague terms. I want a good life. Well, I want good things. I want better things to happen. What, what, what does that mean? You have to be very specific on what you want. You can't, women, you can't say, well, I want a man that doesn't cheat and doesn't lie. Well, that's what you don't want. Okay? That's what you don't want. Some of you are like, well, I want to start a business, but I don't want to lose any money. That's what you don't want. Again. Well, I want to get in a relationship, but I don't want to get hurt. That's what you don't want. Again. Well, I want to work out, but I don't want to be sweaty and sore. That's what you don't want. <laughs> you get it? We've been trained and conditioned to think about what we don't want. And you wonder why you never get what you want because you never spend any time thinking about it. Okay? You just know what you don't want. And listen, I fell victim to this too in my 20s. But in my early 30s, I changed it. I said, well, you know what? I'm right. I need to think about what I want. Like women, if you want a man, say I want a lovely, loyal Fine, beautiful, a great communicator, emotionally intelligent man. That's the type of man I want in my life. Okay? Hey, Keith, how are you? I'm checking my heart vibrations right now. Heart coriander's. I mean, heart co coherence. Hold on. Yeah, okay, good. Oh, oh. When you spend time alone, you'll be surprised how much you will find that you really didn't know what you want. True, you don't, right? And she is so right about that. What's next? Questions for me, please. Okay. How do I scale my business as a personal chef? Aside from Yelp, like you suggested last time. Well, what's wrong with Yelp? I, mean, I, I know a chef right now in Florida. He does very well. He does six figures a year. It's multiple. And that's what he does. He advertises on Yelp and Google. So why not you? Okay. I mean, there's many ways to get your name out there, man. Okay. And you can do publications in different magazines or <clears throat> newspapers in your town or city. <sighs> you can go to Living Social, Groupon.com. You can even put your stuff on Uber Eats now. I've seen it. I've seen chefs, they put their meals on Uber Eats and you can order a meal in advance. Uber Eats and DoorDash. Okay? But, you know, some of you are just expecting things to happen overnight. Take your time. Be patient. <clears throat> What's next here? Love you too, Soul Bloom. As a matter of fact, if I haven't told you lately, if no one else have told you, I love you, okay? And, and I care about you. Just in case you haven't heard that from anybody else, I want you to know that Wesley Virgin loves you, okay? I love you. Care about you. That's why I'm spending time with you. And I want you to feel that love if you as you go to sleep tonight. I want you to think about how much Wesley really loves me. He cares. That's why I'm up late. Talking to you, big head. 
So remember that, all right? All right, what's next? <clears throat> Thanks, Beverly. Thanks, Rainbow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I can feel the love. I feel the love for my community here. Thank you so much. All right, what's next? Next question for me here. What advice you do you have in captivating the audience and attention? I mean, I'm captivating right now. I mean, you see what I'm doing right here? Giving value. I'm captivating you right now. Unless you want to learn how to captivate an audience, just watch and listen to all my videos. High energy, high income. Did I get your attention? Did I did I get your attention? Hello? Did I? Of course I did. Right? So I just captivated you. Hey Samira, how are you? Glow glam queen. Yeah, see, there you go. Just captivated your attention. You could do the same thing as well, Amina. It's just how bad you want it, you know. When I was broke, man, I was willing to do whatever it took. So if I had to scream on video, I would. I didn't care. Whatever it took <laughs> to make that money to get the attention of others. Okay? <clears throat> <sighs> What's up, Nicholas? What's up? Remember some folks, motion creates emotion. Move your body a little bit. Jump up in your bed right now. Who cares that you're naked? Get up. Jump around. Raise your voice. Say that this week is going to be the best week of your life. You're going to be profitable. This week, you're going to quit your job. You're going to start a business. This week, you're going to find the woman on the menu of your dreams. I don't know. Say it. Scream it. Okay? <laughs> emotion creates emotion, folks. I'm telling you. If you want to feel better, move your body. Okay? You're not a robot. You're not a corpse. So what type of shoes did you buy in Paris? Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. A lot of shoes, man. I mean, I have too many shoes, honestly. <clears throat> hey, Eric, how are you? I need to give some shoes away. My closet is just flooded with shoes, and I have three closets. That's just so many. <sighs> I'm a just-in-case shopper. I don't go anywhere, but just in case I do, I want to make sure I have those shoes. Okay? Got to make sure I have those shoes available. My closet is like a mall. <laughs> you getting your Uber on right now? All right. Bring me some Uber Eats. Tips on marketing myself as the brand opposed to just the name. Yeah, like I said, you know, create content. I mean, uh, create content on YouTube, TikTok. Start making content, okay? Like, I'm going to be honest with you. There's no easy way to do it. You just got to start. Like, we can talk all night about different strategies, but you got to get out there. Start a cooking channel on TikTok, right? Teach people how to cook that delicious food. But you don't have space in your closet. I know. I know. I have no space, but listen... Luckily, Lupe did make some space for me when I went to Miami. When I came back, I have about half of my closet back, and I'm so excited. At first, I could not walk in my closet. I was walking on my shoes. So I got about half the space. So if we can just get the rest of those shoes somewhere, we'll be good to go. Wes, do you have a personal closet for shoes? No, nah, I don't. I wish I did. It's shoes and clothes in every closet, honestly. Should you make a few quality friends or be a lone wolf? 
I like being a lone wolf, honestly. No one bothers me, and I can do my thing. I mean, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to try to do $100,000 in one day, folks. Are you happy for me? Are you proud of me? <laughs> you know, even though the goal is 300000 but I'm going to show you. Today we did over like 60 grand. I don't know. But uh, yeah. Um, no, today we did like 70 grand. We're going to do over 100,000. 100K, baby. Let's go. But we need that 300K. I need that 300K a day in my life. I need that 300K. I need it. I need it. You know, I need that 300K. I'm going to change my chain. I'm going to put a three. Forget this one. 100K. What I'm going to do with $100,000 a day? 300000 9 million a month. Okay? Tell us more about that. About what? <laughs> oh, you're in Budapest. Where is your favorite place on earth? Well, Samara, my favorite place. Mmm... Paris, because I love French women and Moroccans and Algerians. I just like Paris, honestly, because, like, I think I'm going to go, I think me and Herman going to go to Paris probably in a month or two. I drag Herman everywhere. Herman never knows where I'm going to go. If you don't know who Herman is, Chef Plex, he's my best friend. And uh, he's the guy that you see in my videos all the time. And uh, he never knows. I just... So funny. Randomly, I would send him a ticket and say, hey, we're going here for a week. <laughs> and he just rolls with me, man. I mean, he's very successful in his own right, so he can try whenever he wants to as well. But uh, <clears throat> I think we're going to go to Spain. <clears throat> I didn't get a chance to go to Ibiza because when I went to Paris, <clears throat> we went to Paris for his birthday last year, and we had a flight booked to Spain, but I was sick. While in Paris, I got food poisoning or alcohol poisoning. And this is why I'm just never drinking again, man. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something. That was the worst three days of my life. I was in that Four Seasons King George Hotel. It's a beautiful hotel, by the way. Gorgeous hotel. Food, phenomenal. People, phenomenal. And I was in the hotel room for three days. I missed my flight to Spain, Ibiza. Right. And I'm too busy throwing up, you know, coming out the mouth and the other end all, all all day. I had to get a doctor, had to pay, I think, almost a thousand dollars for a doctor to come see me to give me some medication. Because I felt ter I mean, I haven't felt that bad in a long time. I mean, whew, Jesus Christ. I just felt terrible. I, just, I, I mean, I was just like, I felt like I was going to die. I, I thought I was going to die. I said, it's over. It's done. I'm done. But I did get some good rest. So, unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to go to Ibiza. So, we got to make it happen. So, maybe in a month, maybe next month, we'll go to Spain, go to Ibiza, and maybe go back to France. I love France. I love Paris. I got a shot, baby. I know. I know what you're thinking, Wesley. You have to, yeah, I know, but I I gotta go shopping. <clears throat> and so maybe next month. Wes, can you build a full running business in ninety days? Of course, I can do it in thirty days if I have the right people. Of course. Yeah, you're right. I don't drink. So the problem is, since I don't drink. Whenever, like, if we go to another country and I, I should, you know, we was partying a lot. We was just, we was having a lot of fun. And Herman, he could drink way more than me. He just can do it. I don't know. He can do it. But me, I was definitely drinking more than usual. And it caught up to me. When I was in that, like, I couldn't enjoy myself in a club. My stomach was killing me. You know, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't flirt. Couldn't talk to no women. You know, this girl approached me and she was talking to me and I couldn't even talk to her because, like, I was hurt. She said, are you okay? I said, oh, I just need to get home. And she said, well, take my number. 
French women, they're very, very uh, aggressive. But they're gorgeous, though. But if you ever go to Paris, I don't know why some Americans don't like Paris. I don't know why. they. Many Americans that go to Paris, they feel that these people are bougie or too stuck up. But I don't know, man. I just think that pe- French people, they really care about the quality of life. Like how they look, how they dress, how they speak. And, you know, they just have this aura of confidence. And, I, and I'm like that, too. And I'm in America, you know. I, I probably need to get out of America, right? I'm just like that. I posture very well and I hold myself in a high regard. Not saying that I'm better than people. It's just how I treat myself. I'm a king, so obviously. So when I go to Paris, it just, I fit right in, honestly. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, good times, though. How many of you needed this? You like these stories, folks? You know, listen, I'm always willing to tell you all these different stories about my life because I want you to know that one day you will experience, one day you will, one day you'll be telling me a story on how you went to Egypt and you got on a camel and you was racing. I've been to Egypt too. I've been to Cairo. I went with this Ethiopian girl and we got on these camels and, you know, let me tell you something about these camels, man. It's very high. And the camel started to run. I was like, oh, no, 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 sir. No, sir. If you fall off a camel, you're going to hurt yourself. I mean, honestly. <laughs> you know, but I always wanted to ride camels with someone. Um, I did it. Well, I did it again with the other young lady I was dating as well. She's Chinese. And we was in Dubai to real camels there as well. But uh, yeah, I'm not a camel man. I'm not a camel guy. I am not a camel guy at all. I'll tell you that. But Cairo, Egypt is gorgeous. You got to go. You got to go to Egypt. If you go to Egypt, write this down. Stay in the Conrad Hotel. That's a gorgeous hotel. Jesus, gorgeous. Go to the Conrad, okay? First time listening to me live. India. I've been to India as well. I've been to Chennai. And I've been to some other cities as well. I want to go back to India. Now, India is probably the, one of the most poorest places I've ever been in my life. And I, when I say it's poor, I have a picture of me in India on my Instagram account. If you go through my pictures, <clears throat> I think I have it on there. Um, so in India, they have this ritual where they go to the Indian Ocean, and that ocean is nasty. It's very dirty. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's insane. But they do this thing where they pray to the gods, or they pray to their deceased. So it's like all these people in the ocean, man, and they're like looking to the sky. I did it too. I just did it, of course. You know, I did it as well. It was very interesting, right? Um, but the food, mm, so good. I love Indian food. When were you in Dubai? Yeah, I've been in Dubai too many times. Uh, let me see. Was that last year I went to Dubai? That's when I was dating the Asian young lady. And we went to Dubai. And I've been in Dubai so many times. Right? I mean, God, I've been in Dubai. I've been in Dubai a few times with a few young ladies. <laughs> <It> was... <laughs> I've been in Dubai with this one, this one girl from, this one woman from, where was she from? Wait, Ubekistan. Yeah. We went to Dubai and we went to South Korea. <clears throat> Had a good time, man. Had a good time. Always good times in Dubai. And listen, if you ever go to Dubai, make sure that you go to the Burj. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is that expensive? It is. But so what? All right? Spoil yourself. You have to stay in a seven-star hotel okay not the palms stay at the seven tar they have honestly to buy the development there it's just so creative and it's always something new in dubai honestly like dubai is the new it's gonna be the new spot man but the only problem with dubai too many prostitutes oh jesus christ too many 
And I'm not about that prostitute life. I am not. And it's so many. I mean, but they're uh, they're super gorgeous, though. Super gorgeous, right, in Dubai. But, man, they're all hookers, man. Too many. It's insane. Oh, God, it's just too many. (laughs) But other than that, Dubai is nice. Come to Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. I think I've been to Chicago once. Yeah, so if you go to Dubai, make sure some of the things you should do. Definitely do the um the tour where you can ride the the little buggy things in the sand. That's really fun. Um do the Range Rover event. They put you in a Range Rover. And they drive through all the sand, but they drive crazy. It's amazing. Uh, do that. We did the hot air balloon. That was very romantic. You know, I did it with my ooh, my previous Asian young lady. You know, we did the um, hot air balloon. It was fun. That was amazing. That was the first time doing that. And what else? Oh, make sure you go to the picture frame. It's called the frame. It's a giant frame in the air. It is amazing. You get to go to the top. You can walk. It's cool. It's cool. It's just something to say that you've done it, right? So really cool. So you got to go to Dubai. Come on, folks. If you haven't been to Dubai yet, what are you doing with your life? Like, I've been to Dubai like ah, 10 years ago. I mean, come on. Come on. You got to go to Dubai at least once. Wes, will you ever host a live event again? Of course. We have another event, but I don't think I'm going to be there, but Ariella will. And let me tell you something. I mean, I'm great, but Ariella, she is she is phenomenal, okay? And I have a lot of women that buy my product right now. And let me tell you something. Ariella is the woman that you want to be around. I follow her. You need to follow her right now. If you're a woman and you want to make money, I'm so proud of this woman because like I've told the story so many times, I met her when she was about 27, 28 years old. She was in my DMs. And now for that, she was in my DMs for an opportunity. And obviously I get a lot of people every day asking me to work with them. But she was very persistent. And she created videos like every day for like, I don't know, months. And I just ignored her for a long time. And she just was creating videos. Wesley, I can do this. I can work for you. I can blah, 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 you know. And one day I decided to give her an opportunity to work for free. I mean, I wasn't going to pay her. For what? Right? So she didn't have any skill. One thing I did like about Ariella is she was a great communicator. So people that communicate well... If they listen to me, you know, they can do well with me. And let me tell you something. Ariella, for two years, man, it was tough. She was very ambitious. She tried things and failed. A lot of different things that she tried to do with me failed. But she didn't stop. That's one thing I loved about her. She didn't give up. You know, everybody else gives up. I had a few other partnerships with these two young ladies. They just fucking give up. I was like, oh, God, you just... Just giving up, you losers. You know what I mean? I can't stand a person that gives up. That's just a loser in my book. And the people that bitch it and, and whine and complain, oh, God, I can't stand it. But Ariella, she wasn't like that. She was very coachable, man. She just, whatever I told her to do, she did it, even if she didn't agree with it, because it wasn't about agreeing about, it wasn't about, like, just not agreeing with me. Just She just did it. Because obviously I knew what I'm doing. I mean, I was already very rich already, right? So she persevered. And now today, man, like this month, she's on track to do $600,000. Can you imagine that? One person making that amount of money. And she's just 30 years old. (laughs) It's crazy, right? $600,000. $600,000. Can you imagine that type of money? So now she's, I think she's going to get her a Bentley, Bentiaga. But I'm going to tell her to wait for like two months. Not right now. 
but she deserved it, man. She earned it. She bust her ass. She worked her ass. And I like people that work hard. And I love people that don't complain and don't bitch and whine. Like, do not bitch and whine to me. I just can't take it. I, I mean, I will block you. Like, I will, like, get the hell out. I just can't take it. Especially if you work with me on a business capacity. Uh, you know, personal is a little different. But, it, you know, if you're working with me in business, no. You need to adapt. You need to adapt quick. I don't need. I don't want to hear your bitching and crying and moaning about your life and your bills. So what? I mean, everybody has bills. Everybody has. So what? That's just life. Right? I like people who are resilient and push through. Right? And she was that person. And now she's doing very well. So she will be having an event in Miami. But in the future, we will do events around the world. We're going to start doing events like in Dubai, Necker Island, maybe go to Bora Bora, Maldives. So we'll have a select few of people. They will fly out and I will do the seminar all around the world. It's going to be fascinating. No more than 15 to 20 people. And those events are like fifty to a hundred thousand dollars, but they're well worth it. Um, just to give you a snippet, like at my last event that I spoke, I know two people right now in my company. They are already reaching their goal, and I know two. They're already reaching their monthly goal. Because in a seminar, I, I want to know what your goal is. Because my job is to condition you in the seminar, and that's what I do because I have a certain skill level. And I know how to uh, persuade and get people to change their internal representation, if that makes sense to you. And I did it. And these people, I mean, like a, even with Ariella, man, she's like, like I said, she went from like 5000 a day. Now she's at 20000 a day right now. And uh, it's just a shift in, in the psyche. That's all what it is. It's really not that difficult to do. So... When I have a seminar again, when I'm going to be there, I'll let you guys know. But Ariella will have one very, very, very soon. Okay. Next question for me here. India. Okay. I'm a, so come. I will come to India, but I need you to make me some biryani, chicken biryani, and some goat biryani. Okay. And I need the non bread. And I want some chicken tiki, okay? Because I'm black and I like chicken. I want some of that red chicken. <laughs> and then I'm there. What's next here, folks? <clears throat> Questions here. Wes, what happened to, to the Latin lady you were dating? What Latin lady are you talking about? Which one? Which 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 woman are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, I got you. I got you, Shakam. Weston, how can I know that I made the right choice? I mean, you never know if you make the right choice, right? Listen, this is what you do in life. You make a choice, you get feedback, you move forward, right? That's it. You make the choice, you get feedback, you'll know if you need to make a different choice. But the key is to make a choice. Okay. See, folks, you guys think non. Listen, let me let's talk about non bread for a second here. It's an Indian like bread or whatever. But however, the real non bread is not in America. Okay, that's just some tortillas, man. I'm telling you, that is not non. That's some bullshit. Listen. I lived in Afghanistan for like a year, and I had real non bread, man, real from the ground, baby. And let me tell you, that was the best meal of my life. So, this lady that I work with, she worked outside of the wire, right? I mean, she lived outside of the wire. She was an Afghan woman. Uh, no, it was a man, and he brought me. So food from his wife, I mean, they cooked their food like on the ground, man. And that was the best food ever. It was some nun with some beef in the middle. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. I miss it. Now, India has the real non bread, folks. What you guys are eating here is tortillas. It's hard to tell you that. It's not real.
please elaborate what her company does. She owns a company by the name of Done For You Services. So what we do is we, I mean, it, it has evolved since, you know, five years ago. But in a nutshell, we just take people that want to make money online and we basically show them how to make money on the Internet. And we also now have a manifestation course, too, where she does coaching for certain people. Ariel is well versed with manifestation. I mean, she knew a lot when she met me and I taught her more. And now she is very astute in teaching people on how to manifest dreams as well. What's next here? Ooh, I can't wait to come. I'm coming to India now. Are you looking for a remote high ticket closer? I am actually. Uh, we are looking for salespeople right now. I'm going to be honest with you. Right now, it's like a blessing and a blessing. I'm not even going to call it a curse. We just have so many sales that are coming in right now that I don't have enough staff. So, like, next week, I'm interviewing maybe, like, 50 people. I'm going to be very busy next week because I got to hire an operations sales manager. I need to hire appointment setters and salespeople. If it's any people that know how to sell if you're a high ticket closer my top closer last year did 1.4 million dollars and he lived in Colombia. i mean listen when you become my top closer you become my favorite i'm gonna be honest with you you know it's nothing that i won't do for you and we are looking for people right now so if that's you just reach out to me via dm but be serious don't waste my time do not waste my fucking time honestly don't text me like, Wes, I can do it, I can do it. Then we get you started and then you quit. Like, don't do that. You know, I'm going to start making people invest money first before you work with me. Because I don't have time to play. Like, we have, we're serving so many people, we're helping so many people, and we just need more people so we can put them through a process so we can get them making ten to $30,000 per month. When are you and Ari going back to having regular Zoom meetings? Yeah, the Zoom call will kick off not this week, but next week. Uh, what's next here? What jobs do you think will not be replaced by AI anytime soon? The garbage man. Yeah, the garbage man. I mean, the people that drill the streets. Everything else? Let me tell you something. A lot of people going to a lot of people are going to lose their jobs in the next decade. A lot million, if not hundreds of millions of people, like office people, they're going to lose their jobs, man. I'm talking like secretaries and, you know, operation, I'm telling you because they have a one day I'm gonna show you guys this site. They have a site that has every AI. It's like it's like a hundred thousand of them, man. I didn't know it was that many, but I can't share it with you right now. But maybe later. But man, they have an AI that can do almost everything. They're coming out with an AI right now that can actually sell on the phone. They have an AI right now that can do a porn center. Well, they they're, they're creating it. They have an AI right now that can act like a human being on text. You think that you're texting a real person. It's not a real person, but it understands your emotions and how you feel. It's insane. They have an AI that can email you. They have an AI almost, they have, listen, they have, <laughs> they have an AI that you could clone yourself right now, right? Like I could be a clone right now. This is probably not me. It's probably an AI. I mean, it's available right now, folks. I'm telling you, it's just, I would say that if you work in the office, be very, very conscious of what's going on in the world because you're going to lose your job. I'm telling you because, listen, I'm not the smartest entrepreneur, but I'm smart enough to know that if I can replace people with AI, I will. 100%. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I love my staff, but my staff need to make sure they show me that they need to be here, right? They need to work their ass off and show me that Hey, they're not expendable because the AI, I'm doing my research. I'm reading, I'm working, and 
I am discovering more ways to use AI to make my business flow faster because the AI is smarter than a human being, folks. Okay? What's next? <clears throat> I know some of you are like, this is going to be a detriment to society. Listen, this, I can't share some, some of the things I just can't share right now. Maybe later I can. But let me tell you something. It's definitely a blessing and a curse with AI. It's a lot of things that's going to go on with AI that's going to be insane. Uh, <laughs> and I can't share. I can't tell you right now. But it, it's, it's just a lot of stuff that's going on with AI that's, yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to make people very lazy for sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, even from like writing emails, you don't have to write emails anymore. I mean, who writes emails anymore? AI does it. Like, even now, I don't write emails anymore. I just use the AI now. Even send a text message, AI can do it. I don't want to, like, it's going to make people extremely lethargic and lazy for sure. But the problem is most of you are so, you're not even computer savvy, so you're not going to even use this stuff. That's going to put you so far behind, honestly. Most of you are going to be so far behind because most people are not willing to understand the technology that, man, you're going to be light years behind everybody. You're going to be in the office writing emails, and Johnny going to write an email in five seconds. He's going to go home while you're there for five hours, man. It's insane. Right? Or he's going to do a process. They're going to hook up to something that's called Zapier. And Zapier is like a middleman to different processes that happen on the Internet. And this is techie stuff. You're not going to understand none of this stuff. But let me tell you something. It's just... People are going to make a lot of money, the people that understand this stuff. A, a lot of money. Like $100,000 a day is going to be very simple for a lot of internet marketers once they really understand how to utilize AI in a way to automate everything. Because that's my goal. I'm going to automate everything. <laughs> What's next here? I'm a liquor and wine connoisseur. Don't think AI can do that. All right, maybe not. I don't know. Wes, do you chill? Like watch Netflix and stuff? Uh, not often. Uh, it's only one show that I watch. It's Married at First Sight. Don't ask me why. It's comedy for me. It's just a funny show. Anybody watch it? It's funny. I, every Tuesday, that is my time that I order me some food and I watched Buried at First Sight. Oh my, it's just so funny, man. It's, I love it. It's just so funny. Two people get together, never seen each other, go to the altar like dummies and say, I do, and become married within seconds. I just like, I like the downfall. I mean, I like when everybody was like, uh, he's not attractive. Well, she's really not my type. Oh, I just love that part. And I love when they try to force themselves together. Like they try to make it work. And you can tell in their faces that they just can't stand each other. Like right now in the season, almost everybody don't like each or somebody in the relationship don't like each other. I don't think it's one. It's only maybe one relationship that's going to make it. But the other ones, they're going to fail. They're going to fail. I don't like Zapier. Why not? Are you serious? I use Zapier for everything. Zapier has completely automated my business in so many ways that blow your mind. But it's very technical, so a lot of you are not going to understand it. It's not even technical. You just don't understand it. What do you do for fun? Talk to you, Mike. I like to work out for fun. I like to read for fun. Um, what else do I like to do for fun? I like to learn for fun. Travel when I feel like it. I could see you, Wesley. Wesley married at first sight. Uh, absolutely. Let me tell you something. If I was ever on that show, listen, if I was ever on married at first sight, it would be the best episode ever because like me, I can't hide my feelings. So if I go to the altar and if I see that girl and she looks like all of my damn, I'm like, uh, uh, cut the cameras. Absolutely not. I can't, I'm not marrying her. No. Well, Wesley, the producer would be like, well, Wesley, just give it a just give it a try. I mean, 
You just met. You said you're here for love, right? Yeah, but uh, uh, I need to look at love and I can't look at this. Like I would just, <laughs> I would be my true self, honestly. The ratings would be high. They would beg me to stay. But if she's attractive, if she's cute, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can do with that. We'll see. Any tips on relationships? What would you like to know about relationships? Oh, yeah, I love playing chess, too. That's fun. Oh, I love hanging with my, ch my children. Like, my children will be down here maybe this week because they're on spring break. My son has a job right now, so he's probably not going to come down. And I'm so proud of him, David, because he's working. He understands the money is the power. I train him that way. He not, he understands that very clearly. But my two daughters, DeAsia and Denaya, they'll probably be here Wednesday or Thursday, maybe. And, you know, we'll have some daughter dates, you know. I got to take care of my, my, my baby girl and then my princess, of course. You know, maybe we'll do a little shopping. I don't know. You know, it depends on how I feel. We'll see. What's next here? I'm a content creator. Can we do a day in the life of Wesley? One day, not now. I'm just too busy. How to live with a person when the relationship lacks intimacy and conversation. All right. So, and listen, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a, I'm not a therapist. Okay. Just letting you know. And I'm not in a relationship. So, you probably shouldn't listen to my advice, but I'm going to give you my advice anyway because you asked. So he's going, how do you live a person when the relationship lacks intimacy and conversation? I would say this. Communication is key. And we all know this. But when I say communication, you have to be able to express how you really feel. And when I say express how you really feel, I don't mean tear down the person. Right? Don't tell people that, you know, I really don't like this. about. No, no, no. Like communicate to the person with the intention to deliver information to them, but not to hurt their feelings, right? Just for you to be comfortable. The worst thing to do in any relationship is to walk on eggshells. I hate that shit. I can't do it. Like, you know, everything that you do, you got to be very careful around these people. Uh, I got to be my true self. So what I would share with you, young lady, you need to be very honest with your significant other. Be honest with them. You know, if they're not reciprocal, then maybe you need to take a pause in a relationship. Okay. And don't be afraid to do that. As a matter of fact, most it's very customary that women initiate divorce and breakups anyway. So uh, that should be no problem for you. But I would say communicate. Communicate your needs to the person. That's that's another thing I don't see with people, um, see with, in relationships. Like me, when I deal with a woman, I tell her my needs 100%. I tell her my uh, emotional needs, my physical needs, my sexual needs. I, I let them know. I, need, I I like this. You need to do this to me. Okay? Period. If you don't do it, then I'm probably not going to be with you too long. Like, I have no problem telling the women what I want at all. And you have to be the same way as well. You know, men and women communicate what makes you feel good, what makes you feel happy. What's your love language? Talk. Open your mouth. Okay? When you be your true self, the other person may not like it. Yeah, they may not. Then maybe that's not the person for you. But remember, your true self doesn't mean that you sh should just unload on the person, right? You know, be respectful. Be tactful. When you speak to people, act like you're speaking to yourself, right? So you don't want to do it in a belligerent way or in a way that's defamatory or berating another person. Hey, Miss Jetter, how are you? Are you getting value here, ladies and gentlemen here? Are you getting value? What made, what motivates you to buy things for your woman? <clears throat> oh, me? Well, when I, like I pride myself when I date a woman. And let me tell you something. I don't, if you notice, I don't, you know, I'm going to show women on my Instagram because I don't date a lot of women. When I allow a woman to get close to me, Okay. Like, if you ever see a woman briefly on my Instagram a little bit, I may show her arm or whatever. That means I'm into this woman, right? And I treat a woman very well because she deserves it because she's like my queen. Even though maybe we're not in a relationship, 
because I don't just, I don't typically get into relationships. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just don't. I get in situationships, but it's okay. Um, like if I'm with you, I'm sleeping with you, we're spending time together. I mean, I'm gonna treat you like a doll. I mean, I'm gonna treat you just well, and I and I pride myself. I I would treat a woman better than any man would ever treat them. Like if you can last a year with me, I mean, how I treat you is just gonna be phenomenal. It is. Not saying it's gonna work out, but it's gonna be very phenomenal. Right, because I do that because, like, you're mine, right? You're mine, es- especially if you're reciprocating in the way that I want, you know, because I can only date particular type of women, and I've talked about this before. But when a woman matches up the type of woman I can deal with and she treats me the way that I want to be treated, oh, man, I give her the world, man. It's nothing that I won't do. I mean, give this, take her trips around the world. Because I want to be with her all the time, of course. But unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, women, mm, they don't last with Wesley Virgin. They just don't last, man, you know, because, you know, I'm not like the average guy. I don't tolerate shit. And certain things are just, like, I'll forgive you, but I won't deal with you. And certain things the woman can do, and they just done. And I could have loved you and liked you a lot, but I can just never do it. It just it says that's the type of like me like myself. I'm just very um, certain things. I'm very unforgiving. Like I forgive you, but I like I can't. I'm not gonna be with you like long term. You just cannot. You just you know from loyalty, from trust, from if you lie to me and all that stuff. I can't, I'm not gonna even deal with that at all. Period. I don't care what it is. And it's just because I have standards. And because you should expect the same out of me. I'm very honest with women. And a lot of women don't like what I say about certain things. But I'm being honest. I'm being my true self. I'm letting you know what you're getting yourself involved with. And I think women should, if they're mature enough, they should just, you know, be okay with it. Because I'm being very honest with you. And if you look at the advantage and the disadvantage of being with me, trust me, the advantages, almost every woman I've ever dealt with has called me try to come back you know you know just be i mean all of them you know they just they try to find their way back or whatever you know i mean it's just normal because i'm a phenomenal man like i know that about myself right and i'll never meet a phenomenal man like me again maybe not you know not even close to it <laughs> and that's just the truth you should go on the bachelor west they would be cool no, I don't have time to be dealing with all these all these women all at one time. I mean, The Bachelor, man, that guy's just a womanizer, man, honestly. I'm not a womanizer. You know, I actually care about people's feelings, uh, women's feelings. so, And that's why I'm very honest with them. So if they can't take it, they need to leave, they can leave. It's okay with me. Uh, what's next? <clears throat> hey Wesley, I understand your story. Respect that you have a high standard. Thank, thank you, Tiffany. Yeah, that's all what it is, folks. Um, I have high standards when it comes to women. I have high standards when it, as it relates to dealing with people, like even in my life. I'm not gonna just hang around anybody. I'm not just gonna date any woman at all. I'm just not gonna do that. I'm not, I don't have to. And a lot of men, you know, I wish men would stand up and be this way as well. And just stop dealing with women just because they have that thing in between their legs that you want so badly. Me, I'm okay with being by myself. I'm okay with being celibate. I'm okay with not having sex at all. I'm, I'm okay. No problem. Not at all. I don't need it. Right? I want it the way that I want it. Imagine if men were like that. Imagine if men would tell women no. I tell women no all the time. You think I don't get texts from women that want to come over here? You think I don't get texts from women that want me to just to tat that ass? Of course they do. Of course. No, not now. I'm working. I can't. No, not right now. I want to. Trust me. I do. But I can't. Not right now. I'm busy. The purpose is more important. I'm building the company. I'm building the business. I'm changing the world for the better. And um, no, they're not going to be able to do it. I wish more men would be more married to their purpose than married to their woman. And let me tell you something. A woman will respect the man that's married to his purpose. And a lot of men think they won't, but they will. 
The big issue with a lot of men is they believe what women say. No, you need to make me number one. No, don't make women number one. Never do that, man. You never make women a number. You never, ever make women number one in your life. Never. It's a trap. Whenever a woman says, hey, make me number one. I should be number one. I should be all you think about. Don't do it. Because if you actually do that and you make her number one, you call all the time, text all the time, go see all the time. Yes, baby. You want this? Yes, baby. She's going to get bored of you. And she will strategically sabotage the relationship. I've seen it happen. Okay? You got to tell a woman no sometime. No, I can't do that. Uh-uh. No. Sometimes you got to check a woman. You know, men just don't know how to be real men with women because they devalue themselves. And you've given women all the value. I was watching this one video and they had asked a question. They said, um, are, are women the prize? And every woman on this rant would say, yeah, I'm the prize. I'm the prize. But think about it. Women typically want to date men that can add more value to their life than what's taking place in their life right now. So wouldn't that make men the prize? Because women want to date up. They don't want to date down, right? Only a dumb woman would date down. If a woman date a certain man and she's used to certain things, she don't want to go down. And even if she does, she's thinking about the other man. She's thinking about how it used to be. And that man will always have access to her. I'm telling you, I know this because I'm that guy. Okay? But, um, man, work on yourself. You know, develop yourself. Don't let women have control over you. Don't let women use, they know their power. They know their bodies, how they look, how they smell, how they talk. They know their power very, and they will use it on you. Okay? Don't be so weak. <laughs> you got to resist it. She will respect you more. Okay? You want a woman that chases you. You know, a lot of women say, oh, I want my man to chase. No, you don't. You don't want a man to chase you. Chase? Chase? You want a man to chase you? No. Uh-uh. No. Women only say that, but that's not what they really want. Because chasing a woman assumes that the woman is running. The woman is ignoring him. He's sending her flowers. He's doing all this. He's doing this. He's doing this. He's doing all this stuff. And she just like, oh, okay, he gave me some. Maybe I'll call. Maybe I'll text it. I'm like, who are you? Listen, man, that's why you need to become a capable man. Men that are capable, they're not chasing women because they have access to many. Make sense? And even if he's pursuing this woman that's trying to be hard to get, it don't matter. He got five or ten on the background. Who cares, right? It doesn't even make So we just wait until that kernel pop, just like popcorn in a microwave. Just wait a little bit longer. It'll pop. But while we waiting for that pop, I got some other popcorn on the couch. Does that make sense? You got to be a capable man to do that. And I've talked about this before. It's a few areas in life that you need to perfect in your life. And our, you, you should already know what it is. I'm not going to repeat it again, man. All right, next question for me here. I'm sorry, I derailed a bit. Questions here. What's next here? See what this, see, see what this young lady said? She said, I hate men that are too available to me. It's a big turnoff for me. A woman said that. A woman just said that. Well, I hate a man that's always available. But then you have a woman that says, he don't give me enough time. He don't give me enough time. He don't spend time with me. Oh, man, he spent too much time with me. I mean, God, he's always available. <laughs> Amen. Listen, you need to smarten up. You see why you shouldn't listen? Don't listen to women about relationships and about what they want. They don't know. They have no clue. Let me tell you what a woman secretly wants. She want a man to tell her what she wants. I'm telling you. She want a man to tell her what to do. She want a man to tell her everything. She wants guidance from a man. She wants to admire a man. She want to take advice from a man. She want a man to tell her everything. I'm telling you. That's what a woman wants. She wants a capable man that she can trust, that can guide her and tell her what to do. 
and be able to relax and capitulate in her, in in his trust. Okay. Let me see here. How do you get over a story of psychiatric diagnosis and how to destroy the negativity it creates? Um, the psych So, you know, listen, just because a doctor gives you a diagnosis, it doesn't have to be your prognosis, right? Don't give doctors all the power. Listen, folks, we are smart people. We have access to the internet. We have access to information. Don't let some doctor or some whatever tell you what you have. It's up to you to believe that. It's up to you to put power towards that. Does it make sense? Okay. What's next here? It's a matter what you sell or how you sell it. It's a matter? Okay, folks. Back up for a second. If you're going to speak to me or comment in the boxes below, use correct English and correct grammar. If English is not your first language, go to Google Translate and copy and paste what you want to say there and copy and paste here. I'm not going to tolerate it, okay, because you're an adult. I'm not going to tolerate it because it's going to affect you in your life. So I'm going to check you right now. I'm not going to answer any questions if you're not using correct grammar or spelling, okay? And no abbreviations, no, none of these bullshit acronyms. I don't want to see you for you. Like, spell it out. It's only three letters, okay? Hey, Darlene, how are you? I hate men. I hate when men text me just saying hi. What the heck is that? He is making so much money, I dumped him. <laughs> he doesn't know how to make women happy. I'm um, sorry you had the experience, Tiffany. Well, I mean, I don't know. The man said hi. What's wrong with that? You see, listen, men, <laughs> women are very interesting, aren't they? But we love them. Women don't know what they want, right? This young lady just said, a man text a hi. And she got upset. <laughs> uh, you got to love women, though. I love them. I love them. Because you'll never understand them, ever. And it's okay. Uh, let me see here. What's next here? And women do like to be told what to do. It's just how you do it. It's, it's, it's your delivery, okay? Just a lot of you men, you just don't know how to deal with and handle women. I have no problem with women, honestly. You know, I have no problem with women at all. In my life, none at all. None. No problems at all. If I had a problem, I'm going to deal with it. And she's either going to go or she's going to capitulate. Okay? That's just how I rock. It's my way or the highway. And I have no problem being that way. Am I flexible sometimes? Absolutely, when I need to be flexible, right? But women know I'm the king. They know I'm the boss. And any time of interaction with me, they, they know the deal because that's what they want. And if they don't want that, because you got some women on the planet, they want to be the boss. They want to wear the pants. They want to be the man. And I'm not going to be with that type of woman. She can find her another man. That's okay with me. <laughs> but not I. What's next here, folks? Questions for me. You guys derailed into relationships here. Are you getting value here, young people? Are you getting value here? It's not that he texted hi. It was that it was a basic text. <laughs> so one thing, folks, you got to, man, let me teach you something about women. Women are very, like, men are physical, but women are literal, which means this. Women like to hear, like, the, the fastest way to a woman's heart and to their mind is the words that you use, okay? She liked that. So you got to learn to be very descriptive with your words. So instead of saying hi in a text, say, good morning, beautiful, how are you feeling this morning? All right? That's, that's better than hi. Make sense? Because you say, hi, beautiful. She says, oh, my God, you call me beautiful. 
Oh, he's thinking about how I'm feeling, right? That's because women are literal. Women like to read words because words compel emotion and women like to feel. So you have to get really good at this with women. Learn how to make women feel something all the time. Be an expert at it. And high and what up, what you doing? Like if you don't care about them, I guess, but <laughs> but if you actually care, uh, I would say you gotta be a little bit more descriptive. Use adjectives, okay, in your conversation and in your text messages. Uh, let me see here. What's the next here? And folks, I, listen, man, I wasn't always like this. I educated myself, right? Everything that I'm talking about here tonight is in somebody's book, okay? Somebody wrote about it, so just read. Be a reader, okay? Huh? Yeah, see, Tiffany says, say hi, how are you doing? I hope you had a good day. Will be great. Absolutely, yeah, she's right. Sir, you ought to see my text messages to women. They love it. <laughs> I like to build an experience. And honestly, I don't like texting in the first place. But when I do text, I like to create an experience for women. Okay. I want them thinking about my text all day long, all night long. If that makes sense to you. All right. What's the next here? Questions. Okay, it doesn't matter what you sell or how you sell it. How you sell it, but make sure what you're selling is something great. Women are powerful. We own female energy. Yes, that's what I want to hear. I want women to be more feminine, not masculine. Okay? I want women to embrace their female, their feminine energy. Oh, I love a woman that have embraced the female side of her. Masculine women? I don't, I don't deal with those. Mm -mm. No, no, sir. Wesley, do you copy and paste the message to them all? <laughs> I used to back in the day. Not anymore. Not anymore. I'm creative now. But yeah, back in the day, of course. When I was dating multiple women at one time, of course. I mean, come on now. I can't be just creative. I got work to do. Copy and paste, 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 paste. But n listen, now, I don't do that now. I don't do that now. Everybody gets their own individual text. <laughs> but listen, I'm a single man right now. I'm not really, I'm not dealing with any women right now, honestly. Okay, so don't, don't, don't have me, don't get me in trouble over here. Let me see here. I'm just a likable man. Beyond. I'm just a likable person. Very. Let me see here. This is why I don't go anywhere. I just go home, go to the gym and sit. That's how I stay out of trouble. What's next here, folks? Hey, how many of you love the transparency? You see how transparent I am? I mean, how many rich people, rich folks are doing what I'm doing here? I'm just myself. Right? And I think you appreciate that because I'm just my true self. Even though I'm worth $40 million, but I'm talking to you just like, hey, you're my friend, you're my boy, you're my girl, my brother, my sister, right? Because I want you to know it's not a big deal. Like, you don't have to hold me on the pedestal. You don't have to be inferior to me. you just like me. You can do exactly what I've done. You can do it better. And that's what I want. Bring the competition. Wesley, what did you say to some, what do you say to someone that's thinking of settling down and they still want to be, still want to be a hustle. What? And a still want to be a hustle. I need you to write that, write that again, M4. Listen, once again, folks, before you send your messages, what I used to do to make sure I didn't make any mistakes, read it out, out loud to yourself. Like whenever you write a message, write an email, write a text message in your life. Read it out loud first, then send it, right? Because when you're writing, your thoughts are moving so quickly here, your fingers and you're writing, you're not able to write as fast as you're thinking, right? So it doesn't make sense. That's a tip. 
I just gave you there. All right, any more questions for me here? We've been two hours in. I got to get to work. Daddy West got to work, baby. Got to make some money, pay some bills. Got to buy some planes, some jets. Okay? <clears throat> Thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. Hold on. Any questions for me? Uh, what do you think about cold showers? Yeah, I do cold showers. I like them. Cold showers, baby. Cold showers are great. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Thank you for joining me here tonight. <clears throat> Remember, you can always go to the podcast at Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin Podcast on Google. Sign up. It's free. You can listen to me all day long, right? Got to condition your mind for success. And if you want access to my course, just go to howtomanifestnow.com. Get access to it. But other than that, listen, don't let me down. Make this week a phenomenal week. Make the next seven days the best seven days of your life by changing the way that you think, changing attitudes. Listen, at any given moment, at any given time, you can change right now. You're thinking the mind. So you can wake up tomorrow morning and be grateful. You can wake up tomorrow morning and have a positive mental attitude. And you can start to expect things to happen in your life. So you know what? I expect I'm going to make some money today. I expect that I'm going to get a new job, a new business today. I expect I'm going to get a new car. Just start saying it. Begin to get comfortable projecting exactly what you want to receive in your universe. So I love you. I love you. I love you. This is Wesley, Billion Dollar Virgin. And let's go. Light up.